Hi, this is Vivek back here again. We are going to study the second part of the supply chain performance measurement. It's called the IDD. Assume we are dealing in two kinds of milk products, a tetra pack of plain milk and another of flavored milk. For convenience, let us assume we are dealing in one flavor, say vanilla. Assume every day we have a constant demand of 50 packets for each product. Now, assume the supplier supplies both two days in advance, meaning for today's demand he has supplied day before yesterday. What do you think will happen? 50 plus 50 packets, 100 packets will sit in our premises for two days. Remember for these two days, they're not going to be sold. They're just sitting there. They have absolutely no value for us. It occupies space. It occupies our attention, consumes current. In all probability, we will have to be careful that it doesn't get damaged. Now, this is the impact of delivering something early. It leads to a buildup of inventory or stock. It also takes up a lot of space. Now, consider what will happen if you have a hundred products instead of just the two. Imagine if each of the hundred products is two days early and each has a demand of 50 per day. What do you think will happen? 5,000 products per day, meaning you have a stock of 10,000 products. Imagine the kind of space it's going to take up and imagine for today's sale, I'm using products which have arrived day before yesterday. What do you think we will do with the stocks that arrived today, with the stocks that arrived yesterday? If we do not have sufficient space, it will cause such a confusion that products might end, end up getting mixed. And now, imagine if instead of two days, the products are delivered 10 days in advance. Can you see the scale of inventory buildup? Can you see the impact on physical space? What do you think will happen to your investment in working capital? Because under usual circumstances, all these stocks are usually hypothecated to the bank, meaning we pay an interest on the stocks that we hold. The larger the number of stocks, the larger is the interest you end up paying the banks. Why would you want to pay interest on stocks which are not going to be sold for now, for just holding it in our place for want of delivery timing? Imagine what would happen if the demand changes from 50 to 5,000 each. Now, this is a humongous problem. Can you see the kind of problems early delivery has caused? Now, consider a car rally, let's say a Himalayan car rally. How do you think the participants are rated? Let us assume a participant has to reach destination A at 5 p.m. If he arrives at 5, 10 p.m., that's 10 minutes late, he is penalized for 10 points. But if he arrives two minutes early, let us say 4.58, he is penalized by 2 into 10, 20 points because they penalize early reaching 10 times more seriously than coming late. Now, can you see why early delivery is such a serious offense? Every supply chain 
works this way. Early delivery upsets the flow. It clogs up the supply chain. It causes payment delays and money flow problems also. Taichi Ono once said the worst among the seven wastes was overproduction. This hasn't been understood properly by anyone. Taichi Ono did not talk about the numbers. Taichi Ono was always talking of flow. What he meant was if some player is working faster than the others, meaning he finishes something quickly and delivers something early, it leads to a lot of problems. Taichi Ono is on record saying all the other wastes are caused by this one single waste called overproduction. What he meant was if one of the players is so quick that he consistently delivers early to the other players, he is going to cause a lot of waste across the network. Now consider a movie. Ten of you want to go for the movie. The movie happens to be at 3 o'clock and you reach at 2 o'clock. What happens? All of you have to sit and wait for one hour. Pretty much a waste. On the other hand, consider a bakery. They are expecting a lot of buns for customers at 4 o'clock. And let's say it arrives one day early. What happens? It simply sets a stock. Don't you think this is a waste? So Goldred decided to measure this and he called it IDD. Any early delivery would mean inventory accumulates. Just as late delivery makes the facility wait, early delivery is equally serious. Now just like an TDD, the IDD has a similar computation. TDD measured the number of days delayed. In IDD, we measure the number of days it's arrived early. This translates into inventory value. Now when regular accounting, we would just note down the cost value of the inventory. But here, we are not looking at the cost. We are looking at the total sales value, not at the cost. Now, Goldratt computed the throughput, which removed the total variable cost from the sales value. However, we will stick to the value because it conveys a similar message. Now, have a look at our example. This is similar. The same supply chain A supplying to B and B supplying to C. Now on the first day, A has an early arrival of, well, 5 days and the total value is 25 lakhs. So how much do you think would be the total value of the inventory? Well, 125 lakhs. Now consider B. On the second day, B arrives two days early and has a total value of 15 lakhs. This translates to a total inventory value of 30, 30 lakhs. Here you see it's not just the number of days the inventory is sitting, it incorporates the value as well. Original accounting would take only the number of days. Here we take the value. That's why it's called inventory dollar days. For non-dollar currencies, we would call it inventory value days. Just like an TDD, the IDD values are also accumulated for each single player on the supply chain. And we also look at the entire supply chain's performance, meaning A, B and C put together. For example, on day one, A has a performance score of 164 lakhs. On day 3, the performance score is 460 lakhs. Now, what do the TDD and IDD mean? Ideally, both the TDD and the IDD should be zero, which would indicate a perfect delivery by every single player in the supply chain to their subsequent customers. Now, we have considered a very simple supply chain. The chain could be complicated and a huge network irrespective of that, it works all the same. This is probably the simplest and the most direct measure of flow among so many methods available in the market. 
To institute this measure of TDD and IDD, it is essential that all the supply chain members agree to make their information public. There is a certain level of transparency which is required, which requires a change in thinking in the managements of the various players on the supply chain. All they need to put up is what is the value of the delay they are, they are enforcing and what is the value of the early deliveries they have been making. If each player in the supply chain maintains this record and makes it publicly available to all the other players, then it's extremely simple for the entire supply chain to find out who is the bottleneck, who needs some help, whom should you not overload because bottlenecks overloaded means the entire supply chain gets jammed. And this is a lovely method of even comparing two supply chains, especially if a person is a member of two or more supply chains.